forces have liberated a key village in the southern region of Kherson, hastening another Russian military retreat. The Defence Ministry in Kiev posted a video showing the 35th Marine Brigade hosting a hoisting a Ukrainian flag above the Davidivbrid above Davidivbrid amid reports of several other nearby villages being recaptured Russian forces have already been forced to retreat in Ukraine's northeast they're now being pushed back in the south as well uh, let's speak to Cormac Smith former advisor to the foreign minister of Ukraine uh, Cormac good afternoon to you just uh, put some meat on the bones of this if you would tell us about the region tell us about the significance Ian, good afternoon. It's good to see you again. Um, look, the significance is that the Ukrainians are, for a number of weeks now, are making very, very significant advances. This is more. This is more good news. Um, I was um, it, it, just something to bear on the um, the, the USSR in f- almost ten years in Afghanistan lost ten thousand, lost fifteen thousand men. Um, the according today to the to the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense, the the Russians have lost sixty one thousand. Now ourselves and the Yanks have always been more conservative on our estimates. I listened to Richard Barons, Sir Richard, uh, General Sir Richard Barons, former um, command of the um, of 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 British Armed Forces, yesterday saying that he estimated over fifty thousand killed and a further hundred and fifty thousand injured so the russians that's 200,000 casualties yeah. the russians are taking massive casualties they are in some cases they are fleeing and leaving massive amounts of equipment behind which the ukrainians are very very grateful for i think there's two points that we need to be very very careful on um putin although it's unpopular is carrying out his partial mobilization um it's reported that he has mobilized up to 200,000 already and 50,000 of those may be ready to be sent to the front in the next few weeks. Now, undoubtedly, the training will be very, very questionable and the command structures and the ability to integrate those troops yeah. into forces will be will be, um, um, will be be questionable, but he has no compunction with throwing his own people into the meat grinder. The second thing is winter is on the way. And there's a big question here. The force that is better prepared for winter fighting, because I don't believe, I don't believe we'll see excused upon a frozen war in winter. I think the Ukrainians will seek to keep driving forward. So the forces that are better prepared for winter fighting, winter gear and so forth, um, I think will do better. But the third thing is winter is also coming at home. And is there going to be any blinking or any weakening of our Western support for Ukraine? Personally, you know, I'm an advocate for Ukraine, and I think we absolutely must not do that. But they're the critical points that give me pause for thought, Ian. Tell us, Cormac, where has it gone, uh, what appears to be, and I'm sure Mr Putin will tell a very different story, but where has it gone so badly wrong for the Russian leader? We were told at the beginning of this, this was David and Goliath territory. There was literally uh, not a chance of Ukraine without, obviously, Western help. Uh, even beginning to match the, uh, the, the the armory and the military might of Mr. Putin. Uh, and yet we are seeing these stories reasonably consistently now. Uh, we have from the beginning seen victories that have happened rather swiftly. Uh, but significant areas such as the one we've just been talking about do seem to be coming around Every few days, every week or so, we're getting that. What has gone wrong with the might of the Russian army? Ian, I think there are three factors that explain this. The first you've already alluded to. I mean, look, there is no doubt Ukraine would not still be in the game were it not for the massive military aid that we um, in the West are giving them. And I'm the first to say that we that we need to be doing more. And there are many other military men who will say the same. The sanctions are also, I put in that same category, the sanctions are also biting, but there is an awful lot more we can do on sanctions. But secondly, um, the Ukrainians are better, are simply better trained. And I know I was out there between 2016 and 2018, and I worked closely with the with the colonels who are, were commanding at the time Operation Orbital, which is the um, which is the operation that the Brits have out there to train the Ukrainian forces, and we've been quietly training their forces since shortly after my, the Maidan 
revolution to bring them up to yeah. NATO standards. There's a huge difference between NATO standards and Warsaw Pact standards, which still bedevil the yeah, Russian army. The Russian army is also hugely corrupt and famously corrupt at the NCO, at the NCO level. But the third and I think the most critical factor is morale. Yes, the Ukrainians are hugely brave. They are fighting for their homeland. I saw I saw a meme recently that said Russians, you know, Russia's mistake was they sent slaves to liberate free men. And that about sums it up. The morale in Ukraine. Look, people say Zelensky should go and negotiate for peace. He doesn't have any choice. The Ukrainian people wouldn't allow him. The last figures that were out were 93% of Ukrainian of of Ukrainians were against any territorial concessions yeah. for peace. This is a this is a country united. I was speaking to a military man the other day, you know, the, the great 19th century um, 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 von Clausewitz. There's three things you need to win at war. There's you there's have the government in the right place. There's have the military in the right place and there's have society in the right place. And at the moment, Ukraine is a country absolutely united. And that's the difference between Ukraine and the cracks that you're seeing coming in Russia at the moment, where the middle class boys in St. Petersburg and Moscow simply do not want to be fed into the meat grinder. So those who can flee are fleeing. Indeed. Cormac, very thorough stuff. Thank you, sir. Cormac Smith. He is former advisor to the foreign minister of Ukraine with us here on Talk TV. Thank you to him. Um, What are you making of that? We are, 